Hello everyone, welcome back to Native Engineering. Today we are doing an exercise on hydrostatic force on submerged areas, fluid mechanics N5. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise that I've taken from my test book and it reads as follows. Determine the total force and its point of application in the system shown in figure 4.5 below. And then that is the diagram that we are given in figure 4.5. And then they say a uh, row for the fluid that is this part, the first part from the bottom, it's 800 kilogram per cubic meters. And then, yeah, they are asking us to calculate the total force and its point of application. So now we are having two sections we have the fluid here and then we have another fluid here so let's say this is number one and this it's number two first let's start with few fluid number one fluid number two rather we calculate for the hydrostatic force we know how do we calculate for the hydrostatic force we're going to say f2 is equals to rho g a times what Y bar. We are still dealing with we are still dealing with this first part from the bottom, which is labeled number two. We are not considering this one yet. So we are going to say our row we are given as eight hundred. Gravitational acceleration we know. The area. Remember, the fluid is uh, exerting its force on this portion, not this portion. So the area we're not going to use pi divided by 4 times d squared because that will imply that we're working with the cross-sectional area. We are working with the area of the wall. Therefore, we're going to use our area as pi d l, which will be pi, our d is 0 0.6 and our l is from here. Remember, we are only focusing on the portion labeled number two, which is from this point to this point. And the length is 1.2 times our y bar. Y bar, still this is the length. It will be that length divided by two. That will be the centroid of this first portion, which will be 0 0.6. When you say 1.2 divided by two, that will give us 0 0.6. And then this, we labeled F2, will be 10.651 kilo newtons. That will be our first force. <coughs> and then we want its point of application. We know, we said, from the bottom, it will be one third of the height. And from the top or from the surface, it will be what? Uh, two thirds of the height. So let's take it from the bottom. Let's say from the bottom Our center of pressure it's equals to One third of our height Which is 1.2 and then we are going to get our height as zero point four meters from the bottom let's take it a step further and say from the surface the surface will be this point point not from here but from here since we are only covering this portion from the surface it will be two thirds of h which will give us what zero point eight meters so this one is from the bottom and this one is from the surface from the surface i forgot to write from the surface and then now we are done with this portion labeled number two we go to the portion that is labeled number one so this is what you need to know when you are dealing with a multiple layers of uh, fluid you are given a tank like this a 
then you are told that there are two layers of fluid. Let's say you are having um, water here and then you are having oil here. This one, we are going to calculate if you are giving the if you are given rho, we are going to use the hydrostatic force. It's given by what? Rho G A times Y bar. If you are given this. And then its point of application. We are still we are, we are talking about this portion. Its point of application will be one depth from bottom of edge from bottom. Since we are only dealing with this portion, its edge will be from here to here, which is exactly what we did. And then now we go to this portion, which is labeled number two. If you are given a rho for this portion, you are going to use the same formula, rho GA times Y bar to calculate for what? For this portion. So the question now says, what will be the Y bar of the portion that is at the top? The, the, the fluid that is at the top will affect the whole thing because it will be exerting some force to this, to, this flu, to this fluid. Therefore, its Y bar will be equals to the whole height divided by 2 from the bottom to the top. And its point of application will also be this one. So here you are going to say h divided by 2 and then if you, when you want its point of application you are also going to use h divided by 2 which will be its point of application. So now in this instant we are not given rho we are given the pressure of the fluid that is at the top section. We know pressure is given to us by what force divided by area. We are looking for the force that is exerted by that fluid fluid we have the pressure, we have the cross-sectional area of this container. Therefore, we can calculate for the force. Force, in this case, will be given by pi, by um, pressure times area. Our pressure is 30 times 10 to the power 3, which is kilo, times pi divided by 4 times, what's the diameter? 0 0.6 squared sorry here we are dealing with we are not dealing with the surface area we are dealing with the area of the wall because that is where our force is being applied therefore this it's, it's wrong poison we are going to use our area as pi d l as we used it in this equation in this equation so our area will be pi times our diameter is 0. 6 and our height will be 1.4 which is the total height of the container why the total height is because the fluid that is at the top will affect the whole length of this uh, container because it is exerting some force on the fluid that is at the bottom therefore we're going to use the total length of the container then we're going to say our answer here is 79.168 kilo newtons point of application it's 1.4 divided by 2 which will give us 0 0.7 meters so now we are having something like this we have to draw the beam Having something like this, this is our beam. The force that is being exerted by the flu the, the fluid on the bottom is this is the magnitude and this is its position from the bottom and from the surface. We're going to say 0 0.4 from the bottom. From here to here that is the force that is being applied by the flu the fluid on the bottom and its magnitude is eight it's ten rather 
0.651 kilonewtons. And then we go to the second one. The second one, it will be here. From the, bot from the surface, it's 0 0.7, 0 0.7 meters. And its magnitude, 79.168 kilonewtons. Giving us the total force that is being applied to the container is our FT being equals to F1 plus F2. Our F1 plus F2 will be this plus 79.168, which will give us 89.819 kilo newtons. And then remember from the question, they said you must calculate for the magnitude of the total force and its point of application. So now, what we are going to do is from the beam, we are going to put this. We don't know exactly where it is acting. We are going to do it like this and say this is X because we do not know exactly where it is acting. We are going to say this is X, the distance. The magnitude, we already know it's 89.819 kilo newtons. And then we are going to take moments about the top or the bottom. I am going to take moments from the bottom, which is this point. So when taking moments from the bottom, we are going to have something like this. From here, we are having this value, which is what? Let's just have this space, which will be one zero point six five one what's the distance from the bottom to this force where it to where the force is acting it's zero point four and then we're going to say what plus we go to this force since they are going in the same direction what's the distance from this point to this point we know it's zero point seven since uh the total length is zero it's one point four and from here to here is 0 0.7. From here to here, it, also, it is also 0 0.7 because 0 0.7 and 0 0.7 will give us the total length. And then this will be 79.168. The distance 0 0.7. It's equals to. Because now we are dealing with a force that is going to the opposite direction. If we put it here, we decide to put it here, it will be negative, but Everything must equate to zero, so we can put it on the other side of the equal sign. The magnitude is 89.819 times our x, which is what we are looking for. And you can see that it is the only unknown in our equation. Therefore, we solve for x and get that our x is equal to 0.66. Four meters from the bottom indicate this one from the bottom because it is possible that they can tell you to calculate for the value for the position of the total force from the top or from the bottom they can state to you and tell you exactly where you should calculate it from so if you have calculated from the bottom meanwhile they have told you to calculate uh, from the top, you can say now 1.4 minus this 0 0.664. The answer that you are going to get here, it will be from the top or from the surface. Yeah, from the top. And that's how we go about answering these type of questions. Pay close attention to what they are telling you about the structure of the container. Because it is not always the case where they are going to give you a container where which is circle here and here. So they can give you a square, something like this. And then they say, this is your container. And they tell you to work only with this side. This is where we are going to consider it like this, having your hydrostatic force acting here. And this will be your centroid. Your, your, your area will be 
this and this so especially the the questions where they are not giving you a diagram they're just giving you the scenario where you have to draw the diagram yourself you must pay close attention to the shape that they are giving to you because that is where they will start to trick you and once you get this wrong the whole thing that you are going to write will be wrong will be right according to the structure that you drew of which is not what they are they have told you to draw and another thing if you are having two fluid two layers of fluid you must always remember the first fluid that is where you are going to apply those one third from the bottom two third from the top but once you are given two of them after applying all of those to this and now you are to consider fluid number two you 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 you, you must know that this one will also affect the fluid that is at the bottom therefore the force from this will be acting at the middle of the two we are going to say the distance of the fluid at the top and the distance of the fluid at the bottom the sum of these two divided by two and that will be where the point of application will be the point of application for the fluid that it's at, at the top even if they choose to give you three layers even if they choose to give you three layers you must know that this fluid will affect only this therefore the point of application will be the sum of these two and then you put it in the middle this will affect this this and this therefore you are going to say the sum of these three and then put it in the middle so yeah that's how we go about answering these type of questions i will see you on the next lesson